Hi everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to follow along the journey of making this dress in real time with me, both on Instagram and YouTube, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. You get to choose how much to pledge per month and you will receive live updates both on my close friends Instagram stories and access to all of the YouTube videos right now. Hope you enjoy the video. Hi everyone, it's now the 26th of July and I've been working at hand sewing this hem for about a week now, so a couple of hours each night um, and I'm still yet to finish it. Um, I'm about, I'm going to say close to halfway done with the hem um, after about a week. Um, it is taking up a lot of time but I think that's due to the fact that one, I don't have time to work on this um, throughout the week and two, I am using a stitch that requires a bit more time and effort to do. I'm not doing a regular whip stitch. Um, if, you, if you saw Bella May's new video, well, it will be an old video by the time you see this video. Um, it's the one about making the skirt for her Phantom of the Opera masquerade dress based on the 2004 movie. Um, so she did the same sort of hem. Uh, where she did a facing for it. Keep in mind my facing is cut on the straight grain, hers was cut as an actual facing following the shape of her train um, and for that reason she just did a regular whip stitch to attach the facing to the lining of the skirt. Um, that would have worked well for what she did because her facing was already, already molded to the, the shape of the skirt along the train. Uh, whereas mine, as you can see like in, at points like this, I've had to pleat the fabric and make it fit because mine was cut on the straight grain. So this particular area now that I'm showing is the curved part of the train of the skirt, like the most curved part. Um, if I move towards like the front section of the skirt, um, you can see that the facing is a lot more straight and was a lot easier to sew through. So I'll just show a close up of my stitching so you can see that. It's what I call the crisscross stitch because you it's little X's basically um, and the reason why I used this stitch instead of a regular whip stitch is because it allows for a little bit more ease in the fabric um, and as you saw here I did need to ease the fabric into the shape that I need it to be so yeah I'll just quickly show you how I actually do this stitch um, so it's essentially little back stitches along the lining of the skirt and then along the facing of the skirt. So I'm just pulling up here through the lining. I don't know if you can see that. It's a very hard angle to get. So I'm just at the lining. Oh and by the way this stitch doesn't show at all on the outside of the fabric which is what I am after. Anyway Back to how I do the stitch. So at the moment the thread is on the lining of the fabric, not on the facing. So if it's on the lining I will then go into the facing of the fabric. Sometimes I will try and poke through the crinoline, sometimes not, just above the crinoline. Anyway I poke through there, I make sure from the back side that I haven't caught the satin, it's not caught by the needle. Then I poke through just above there and I pull that through. So this is only catching the facing fabric, the lining fabric if I can, and sometimes the crinoline horsehair in there. So I pull that through. And now you can see that the thread is now on the, on the facing side. So because it's on the facing side, I will then go into just the lining side and Again, not catching the satin layer underneath, so I use my finger underneath to feel the satin to make sure it's not caught in there, and I just pull that through. And that is essentially the stitch, and it creates this crisscross 
pattern all the way along. And yeah, I think it works nicely for what I need it to do. And yeah, I just need to continue doing this for the whole skirt. <laughs> almost there. Seriously though, almost there. I'll just bring my camera up. Oh, by the way, I'm about to watch the the live stream that Noelle and Constance did while I do this. Um, but yeah, here's the skirt all on the bed. Um, and I'm like, I don't know if you can see that, but like I have done quite a bit already. So yeah, and it gets shorter towards in there. But yeah, you can see just how much I need to do. It's still a lot. Yeah, still pins everywhere. Anyway, I better get back to it and I will see if I can put this on a, on a time lapse. Hello everyone, today is the 1st of August and I have not touched this. Um, all I've done is just put the skirt on the dress form. As you can tell, I've finished hand sewing the facing to the hem of the skirt. So this is how it looks and I've just put it on the mannequin with the train ruffle attached of course and I've just got the netting overlay over the top just to get me a bit more motivated. Although it isn't really helping. <laughs> um, so if I go around to the front, um, you can see where the skirt hem is and on the inside it looks like this. I've done all of the catch stitches all along there. I wish my phone would focus. There we go. I don't know if you can see the stitching but it's all along, all along there. Focus. There we go. And there you can also see the beginning of the train ruffle, which then extends onto the ground and around to the other side. So that's what that looks like. I'm very happy with how the hem has turned out. Um, the hand sewing for the whole of last week, it was actually a bit over a week that I was hand sewing every night. Um, but the hand sewing was definitely worth it because I am very pleased with the end result. Um, I'll just move this out of the way a bit so you can see. There we go. But yeah, no visible stitch lines on the satin fabric, which is what I was after. And um, yeah, the tulle layer is going to be, sorry, netting layer is going to be over the top anyway, which is going to look quite nice, I think. Um, so the last thing that I'm thinking about doing is fixing up this. So this is the top of the train ruffle and it keeps flipping up, keeps flipping up like this and it causes this weird ridge um, and because this is a satin fabric it just, it picks up where the light hits and it looks really odd. So what I'm thinking of doing with this is, I'm either thinking of hand stitching this down all along the very edge. Um, in fact, I could actually just machine, machine, bleh, machine stitch it. Um, but the other thing that I've been thinking about is 
at the moment, this train ruffle keeps peeking through whenever I move the mannequin around like this, as you can see, and I don't want it to show through. So the other thing that I'm thinking about doing is attaching more snaps to the train. And I'm thinking about attaching the snaps, um, maybe like one there, one there, one there, and then maybe like one on each side. And so altogether that's five snaps around, maybe even six might be better, having two there, one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that, just to keep the skirt train on top of the train ruffle so the train ruffle doesn't come through. Um, yeah, that's just what I'm thinking. Um, and I would do that the same way that I attached the snaps for the actual train up there. Um, if you remember me doing, um, I did, I sewed, no, I didn't sew. I put the snaps on fabric before actually hand stitching it to the dress and I only stitched to the lining layer of the dress. So yeah, I'm thinking about doing that. We'll see what I end up doing, um, but I think after that's done, that will be the last thing that I need to do for this base skirt. Um, as for the tacking stitches for all of the ruffles along the train, um, I don't know if you remember me saying, but I wanted to do some tacking stitches. Oop, I wanted to do some tacking stitches to keep this all facing that direction. Um, but then, <laughs> but then I, I, that's too much work. I sort of don't want to do that. And the other thing is, is if I'm wearing this skirt and I'm walking forwards, then all of the ruffles are going to go this this way behind me naturally anyway. And there's no reason for me to be walking backwards in this dress. So I'm just hoping that all the ruffles will lay the way they need to lay. Um, and then the only thing that I need to worry about is just attaching snaps um, around these points to keep the skirt on top of the train ruffle to hide it at all times. So yeah, still going, almost there, just a bit more to do. So, update, I have sort of changed my thinking. Um, what I've gone ahead and done is pinned down all, not all, but the bottom most ruffles. And that is where I'm going to do tack stitching. So yes, I am going to do tack stitching. Um, Along the very edge of the train ruffle, I'm thinking of just stitching the whole way along um, just to keep that from flipping upwards um, because it likes to do that. And then as for what I was thinking about snapping on the skirt to the train, I've decided that I'm not going to do it the whole way around. I want this to be free flowing, but I do want to make sure that these side parts do not have the train ruffle showing. So for that, I am going to just put three snaps on either side. So one there, one here, and one here. And then that's three on this side. And then same for the other side, I would just have three along there. And then this part here would be free from the train ruffle to flow nicely. Um, there is still a little bit of a ridge going on. Um, with the train ruffle forming weird shapes and lumps and bumps, but honestly, I am happy with this. And with the netting layer over the top, it will sort of stop the shine coming through from the satin where there's weird lumps and bumps. And here's how it looks from the front. So 
yeah, pretty happy with that. And um, I guess the next step is to hand sew all of this down. Um, and the reason why I'm hand stitching it and not putting under the machine is because you can tell I did, when I sewed all of the ruffles by machine, it's really hard to keep this fabric laying flat. And I'm just scared that given how big this train ruffle is, if I put this under the machine, I'm probably going to make a mess of it. <laughs> so I am going to just watch a movie or um, watch Rain. I'm up to season two, re-watching it again. Um, and just hand sew. Um, and, you know, after doing all of this hand sewing, I don't think I'll have a problem with doing a bit more. Um, and I definitely prefer hand sewing at night time rather than using the sewing machine and being loud and annoying the neighbours. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to tack all of those down by hand. And then as for the snap thingies, um, it's going to be the same way that the train ruffle was attached to the skirt. Um, probably won't get around to doing the snaps today. Probably won't even finish hand sewing all of this down, um, all of the tacking stitching by the end of today, but we'll see how I go. I have plenty of videos to watch because today is the first day of Coco Vid. So yeah. So I got a little bit distracted, as you saw in the clips, and tried on the skirt instead. And then I also remembered that I had this. So I tried it on with this um, crinoline, fake crinoline, cheap thing from AliExpress. And originally when I got this, I thought, I don't want to use it. <laughs> so it's been hiding under my bed ever since. Um, I probably received it a couple weeks ago now. Anyway. Um, so my thoughts now are I'm still going to do the tack stitching on the train ruffle, but I'm going to hold off on doing the snaps because when I have this extended train thing, um, it really helps to keep the skirt lying over the top of the train ruffle and covering it. So maybe snaps might not be necessary. We will see. But the thing about this crinoline that I really hate is the fact that it's so big and puffy at the front. I really do not like this outwards shape and I also do not like how it comes out in front of me towards the front, I guess. Um, so as you would have seen in the clips, well, depending on how I edit them, um, I marked two points either side on the steel boning part of the crinoline and what I'm thinking of doing is and this is like following how some of the bustle skirt hoop thingies were made um, where they like early bustle that is or late bustle is it late bustle where they um, attach a string from here I shouldn't say string but some sort of yeah, some sort of string, whether it be ribbon or cotton tape or whatever, um, and you attach the string from there through to there and it sort of collapses the skirt inwards. And then I'm thinking I would chop out this front section because I don't need that anymore and I would just have like a flat or almost flat front. Um, and then I'm hoping that that will squeeze this inwards more and it will have a more streamlined shape, not this bell shape that I really do not like from the front view um, but I really do want to keep this back train part because that really helps to lay the train out nice and how I want it. Um, so that's my thinking now. Um, now that I've tried it on and everything I, I feel a bit more confident with where I'm heading. Um, so yeah I'm just going to leave that on the mannequin. Um, I'm going to detach the train ruffle from the skirt and then I work on the train ruffle while I watch something in the bedroom. Um, 
and that yeah I'll just leave the snaps for now. So another thing that's really annoying me is that I am really hesitant on starting on the netting layer until I receive another netting that I, re um, that I purchased from AliExpress which has lace on it. I want that lace netting first so I can see how it blends with that netting. That's why I don't want to start anything on there um, just yet but oh, it's just annoying and um, it's been about two three months now and I still haven't received my netting with lace um, and I just got an email from AliExpress saying my order should have arrived today and if it has not arrived by today um, they're closing the order and if I still haven't received it then I need to file a dispute like I don't care about all of that I just want the damn product anyway um, I also do need to do the bodice as well um, too many things to do. I'm constantly thinking about it, all of the different aspects, but that's the way it goes.